So today, I'm going to be going over the reasons as to why I chose Heroku over DigitalOcean for my full stack web application. Just as a quick overview, there are three things that people usually talk about when they're talking about a full stack application. Those three things are the front end, the back end, and the database. Today, we're going to be talking about where to put your server side code. So where to put your back end code. Now, the front end and the database are usually hosted on different places. So the database, for example, you can have MongoDB on Mongo Atlas and you can have the front end on Netlify. So I'm not going to be talking about these two things. I'm only going to be talking about the back end and why I chose Heroku over DigitalOcean as the premier choice to host my back end. So I want to add a quick disclaimer that I know there are many places where you can host your server side code. For example, you have AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, Heroku, you know, there's a ton of places. And these three options, I'm actually like, I didn't do too much research on them. I know that places like AWS offer a ton of configuration. And I'm sure that, you know, Google and Microsoft offer the same level of configuration to, you know, um, the type of backend that you want. But when I worked with AWS in college, it was pretty difficult to set up um, because they offer so much configuration. It's not necessarily needed for a weekend project. So since my project is something that I only worked on in the weekends, um, I wanted to go with something very developer friendly and very easy to get started with. And I came down to these two choices of DigitalOcean and Heroku. So before we get started on, you know, comparing the comparing and contrasting DigitalOcean versus Heroku, let's let's first understand what these two platforms actually provide. So DigitalOcean provides you with a virtual computer. You'll be given a virtual computer or like a virtual server, and DigitalOcean will make sure that it handles the permissioning of that specific amount of space, and everything is up to you after that, really. Um, each uh, sort of instance of DigitalOcean is known as a droplet. And because DigitalOcean does not manage this thing for you, and you're going to be the one managing it all by yourself, it's relatively cheap. On the other hand, Heroku, I like to think of Heroku as a virtual computer from Best Buy with Geek Squad on your side, like every step of the way. So DigitalOcean is like having a virtual computer and Heroku is like having a virtual computer with the Geek Squad, like just taking care of all possible issues that you will ever face. Heroku is considered a platform as a service. And that is because it comes with a team of people who kind of manage your instances for you, right? And that's how I like to think about Heroku is like Heroku comes with like a team that handles your backend scaling. In DigitalOcean, you handle all the backend scaling yourself. So that's why DigitalOcean is very cheap. Heroku is very expensive. And these are sort of the things to think about when you're choosing between DigitalOcean and Heroku. And I actually started off using DigitalOcean because I thought, you know, I wanted something super cheap and I actually wanted to learn how to learn, uh, like manage uh, several different droplets and have them orchestrate with each other, as well as like learn about how to do some reverse proxies with Nginx and things like that. But it was way too hard. I mean, it's not that it is hard, but I just didn't have time on a weekend to learn all of that and actually implement it. You know, if I was doing that every day in my day-to-day -day job, you know, it would have been pretty straightforward to pick that up. DigitalOcean is very, very cheap. So I highlighted two of like the similar packages. So here you have like one gigabyte of memory, which I'm presuming is RAM, um, and like this much disk space, and that's like $5 a month. Whereas with Heroku, the same sort of memory usage that you get is now $50 a month. So Heroku is definitely way more expensive. And obviously there are free tiers, like um, there's a free one and then there's like a hobby one that's like $7 a month. But if you want to actually run a business application in a production environment, it is recommended that you start off with the standard 1x, which is $25 a month, uh, which is what I'm also using. So why did I choose Heroku? It's obviously more expensive 
And generally, when you have a weekend project, you don't want to start off with something that is so expensive, right? Well, there's like four real reasons. So the first one is, well, <laughs> I work uh, as a full-time software engineer and I do full stack development. So like front-end, back-end database stuff, the stuff that we talked about in the first slide, but I don't have any experience with how to deploy anything. And I don't have that much time, right? Uh, because when you're working 40 hours a week, it's, it's very difficult to set out time every day to learn and figure things out. And already I was learning a lot of new technologies like Vue and man, it, it, it is really difficult to start something from scratch and learn a new sort of way of thinking. And oh God, it, 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 is, it is pretty difficult to learn everything if you just have time on the weekends. Second thing, I also don't have any DevOps experience. I tried learning Docker and Kubernetes you know, how to manage them so that I could install them on my digital ocean droplets and kind of manage them in there so that I'd save money. But I had no backend experience. And when you don't have experience and you have to kind of deal with the security issues and making sure that the server never goes down, you know, it, it can turn into a headache really fast. So first reason I work full time, it's pretty difficult to find time already uh, to like learn all these things and manage them. Second reason, I don't have experience. Third reason, any free time I have, I wanna be spending that free time finding product market fit. So anytime I'm not doing that, it means the product is not growing. And if it's not growing, then then you know there's, there's, there's no point in, in having like a cool, like dockerized containers, all communicating with each other with Kubernetes, scaling automatically if nobody's using it, because it'll just never get to that point. So finding product market, Fit is definitely the number one reason. And the last thing, which is suppose a lot of users do join, right? So right now I'm paying the $25 a month plan. Suppose like a lot of users join and there's a lot of concurrent users and that is gonna force me into the $50 plan or yeah, into like the $50 plan, right? The assumption there is that if I ever have to increase my plan, that means that enough people are coming onto the website such that if I still have not found a way to do some sort of monetization, then I'm doing something wrong. If there is like hundreds of visitors visiting my website every single day and that requires me, I mean, that's what it really requires to be, that's what's really required to be using the standard 2X is, is having like, I think more than like 50 concurrent users is when you'll start hitting, like you'll have to upgrade. Um, so unless that happens, like, and, and I can't find a way to like monetize that, like I'm doing something wrong, you know, I'm certain that if that does happen, I will have some sort of money coming in that will help me offset the cost of increasing Heroku, uh, increasing the Heroku costs. So yeah, going back to the main, uh, full stack theme here, if you're building a full stack application and you don't know where to host your backend. And if you have similar issues, like you work as a full-time engineer, don't have that much time to manage servers and don't know too much about infra and how to set that stuff up, then I would definitely recommend going with Heroku. Uh, Heroku is a great option and it is definitely a lot easier. It is a lot easier than DigitalOcean. They will scale everything for you. All you have to do is go to the website on Heroku and it's like, um, there's like this scroll bar um, which says that I'm using one, uh, one standard 1x dyno, and I just have to like bump that up to two, like just literally like scroll it up or something. And yeah, that that's all you really have to do for Heroku. So if, if you're in a similar situation, definitely check out Heroku and give Heroku a chance. I know a lot of developers want to do everything themselves, customize everything, but yeah, definitely give Heroku a chance. So that is the reason why I chose Heroku over DigitalOcean. Yeah, uh, that's that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, you know, leave a like and subscribe for more in the future. I'll talk more about like decisions that had to go into making my full stack web app. Omae wa mou.